outro cast. I really like the Dirty Money EP. So Thank I'm, you. I'm curious, when you wrote the song Dirty Money, did you know right away, like, this is the centerpiece of the EP? Was it a special song? Yeah, I, I, I instinctively thought that, but nobody else, or nobody, I, I wouldn't say nobody else, but I, that was my first initial, uh, like, feeling. I was like, this is a banger. This is a banger, you know? I was like, ooh, I don't know what's happening. Uh, and uh, I feel like it's happening now, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Now the song has gang vocals. That's what we call it here in the States. I don't know if you have a different yeah. word in Norway. It's, like sta- it's, it's stadium. Stadium rock. Okay. Stadium rock, gang vocals. When you wrote the song, did you know right away like, hey, we need these kinds of vocals on the chorus? Or did that come once you were recording it? Uh, we, uh, You mean the gang vocals? That was definitely Ryan. Ryan Spraker. That was his, he was like, we need gang vocals on this, you know? Because the line was so big. It's like, pay me all your dirty money. It was like, we have to put this into a song. It has to be written right now. And it has to come out because this is what we're going through. Pay me the dirty money, you know? Pay it to me. I'm, 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 I'm monkeying around day and night, working three jobs, you know? Like, this is, this is, this is our reality, you know? Sure. Well, that's not the only song that I really like on the EP. I'm Busy is another cool one. And what I enjoy about I'm Busy is that it has references to all kinds of other songs. There's a Dr. Dre reference, I think, where you mentioned Still Got Love for the Streets. There's a Katy Perry reference. Is that a Mandy Moore reference to the song Candy? When you say, I'll call you, maybe? It's, it's, uh, wasn't her name um, Carla? No. Wasn't she the Danish one? I'll call you maybe. Carla. Oh, uh, Carly Ray Jepsen. Jepsen. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of pop uh, references in that song. It's uh, Katy Perry, I Kissed a Girl. It's uh, JC and, and uh, you know, uh, by Ring, you know, Beyonce. Like, I'm just like, still, we, we, we had a blast. That was me and Anthony Rosamando. It was like, we're going to just write the most ridiculous hip hop lyrics that we could ever imagine. That's just like dissing the top. Who's the top? It's, it's JC. We have to take him down and Beyonce with him. And who's the biggest in pop? It's like Paul McCartney, you know, and we just like went for it and we had a laugh, you know, but <clears throat> and it wasn't serious in that sense. But it was just like to make a point of how larger than life, you know, this super ego rap hip hop, you know, and then how, how does it how does it feel when a woman says those things you know i just wanted we just wanted to to, to try it out <laughs> it sounds good to me and another cool song on there is sick of you uh there have been other great songs named sick of you there's a cool iggy pop song there's a song by cake did you know these other songs at all before you wrote this um i'm a big fan of iggy you know um but i haven't uh, i don't i yeah i check that after i've written the song usually it's like when i wrote bad karma with desmond child in his castle in in, in tennessee nashville uh <clears throat> he was like there has to be a song named bad karma you know i can't i can i can't imagine that there is no such song you know and i was like no nah, i don't know let's check you know and there was no song with that name so i was like whoa we actually coined that in a pop rock song for the first time <laughs> you know that was me and desmond i'm proud of it you <laughs> know yeah i've had the pleasure of interviewing desmond and i was surprised he remembers everything and somebody who's written so many songs like him not not just songs that have charted but so many songs he remembers everything one he of- is incredibly incredibly intelligent and talented that guy And one thing I've heard about Desmond is that you have some kind of a song within 15 minutes in most cases. Did you have that quick of an idea with Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, this guy is a genius. Like, this is one of the world's true geniuses when it comes to music writing, pop writing, rock rock writing. Like, he is a true genius. And, 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 uh, the things I've learned from this man is 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 endless. The list is endless, and it, and it wasn't until I met Katy Perry and we did try we tried to make a song together, like or we made a song together actually, <laughs> but uh, um, that I realized she had learned the same things from him. You know, she had learned. We had we had we were his students, so two of his students found each other in the studio. Like, 
did he tell you to do that and not to do that? And I was like, yeah. Oh, you got that from Desmond. I was like, yeah. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> you know? he, he, he is he's like an encyclopedia of rhymes and 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 but but it goes way deeper than that i mean you know this guy i don't know what to say yeah definitely you can have a hit song in 50 minutes for sure uh, you know he he even had a hit in january 2021 so i think that's technically six decades of hits so he did his homework so back to you uh your influences are all over the place in a great way and something i'm very curious about was there any metal influence from the band TNT in your work? Because that's one of those oh. bands that's only big in like Norway and Japan, as far as I know. <laughs> it's funny that you say, because, you know, I, I think I, yeah, I kind of did the song that was uh, uh, kind of spinning off of a TNT uh, song because I met the, the, the charismatic guitar player, Ronnie Letecro. Ronnie Letecro, uh, yes. In, in a party, you know, and we, we, you know, we met and we, we had a blast, you know, we got so drunk and <laughs> and uh, and I kind of made like the answering song to his hit, which was 10,000 Lovers, where he's like bragging about having 10,000 lovers. And yeah. then I'm like this, I'm making this song where I'm like, I'm one of those 10,000 and I'm actually really lonely right now. It's, like, <laughs> it's not fun, you know, whatever. I made like a, a, a kind of a rock song about that. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, that is exactly what I wanted to hear. So uh, the press <laughs> materials around your EP, your Dirty Money EP said, don't call it a comeback. This is not a return, but you're back. Uh, is the plan to have a follow-up album in the near future or another EP in the next year or two? I'm, I'm exploding with music. I've been holding it in for, for, for 10 years. You know, and I'm 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 working with a producer in Nigeria who is a big uh, uh, hip hop producer over there. I'm I'm working with rappers in America, and I'm I'm working with gospel singers in 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 in, uh, in Tennessee, and I'm 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 just like putting together the the dream work of my life, and I have no idea where this is gonna end because I'm just gonna keep making music until I keel over, and and as long as people want to hear it, I'm just gonna keep going. You know, yeah. So between the music, between working with the political party, between being a mother, it sounds like you don't have a lot of downtime in general. No, I don't. But I have some really nice, uh, like, uh, students in my rap class that I do locally that that helped me out so much with in my garden the other day. So I was like, okay, we do a trade. I I do some rap classes. You help me with this insane amount of branches out here. Awesome. So I'm a barter. I'm a bartering uh, hippie. I'm just like, I give you what something, you give me something. It's all cool. We don't need money in this town, you know? <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Well, two quick questions, and then you're free to enjoy that garden. And the first question is, do you have a TV show recommendation you could pass along to someone needs a new show or series to start? Hmm... Um, I, I like nature programs. Is that a boring answer? Uh, no. and, <laughs> and also, um, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, um, oh, God, you know, actually, you got me. I, I don't have time to look, watch TV. I really don't. I'm, I'm, I'm busy creating music for the TV shows and, 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 and I'm actually I'm, I'm, I'm doing TV shows <laughs> myself. So. But yeah, what was I going to say? It's the Peaky Blinders. Peaky okay. Blinders. That was, that's, that's the one. Cool. Yeah. And the last question I have for you, and this can include as much self-promotion as you want. Any last words for the kids? Meaning, any advice for children? Uh, guard, guardian your creativity with your life and with your teeth and your claws, you know? Don't let anybody take your... Uh, creation and creativity away and choose your critics don't let everybody have an opinion about your work before it's flying you know so it's just uh, show it to some trusted friends if you have a painting that you like don't show it to that negative friend you know show it to somebody who can be supportive and, and maybe help you grow as a, as a painter or as a writer or you know protect your art protect your, your heart you know and be nice to your mom and dad and listen to what they say. Protect your art and your heart. Well, thank you so much for your time. 
Hope to see you live in New York when things get normal again. But till then, just keep making that great music again. Big fan of your EP. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank and you, Ida. Take care. Yeah, take Bye care. Outrocast.